And that's why today genocide is attempted against the Jews. It's not about the Jews. It's about God. All of his men's uh, possessions and wives were all plundered in the city burnt. By whom else but the non-existent Amalekites? Saul says, I've utterly wiped them out. There are no Amalekites. Turns out this non-existent group of people are still what they were, a bunch of plunderers. They're just wicked people. They're plunderers and they, are just, they destroyed Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they're wicked people. And now we go back to Esther chapter 3 and verse 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. Who was the king of the Malachites? Agag. Of course, that's mentioned deliberately in Esther on purpose, isn't it? The chickens come home to roost. It's ironic, isn't it? That God takes wicked men, God in His divine sovereignty, and then sovereign's not a bad word because God is sovereign. It just doesn't mean that God selects people to go to hell. God's in control all the time, and God in His divine sovereignty preserves His people, and He used, these are the people that He used to preserve His people, but it's ironic, isn't it? How King Saul's sin of not destroying the Amalekites utterly results in the necessity of the debauchery in the story of Esther. Do you see it? Esau had descendants who were so wicked that when the children of Israel were very vulnerable and wandering in the wilderness, that they attacked them and tried to plunder them a people who are nomadic, a people who don't have a military, a people who have spent their life as slaves, and you pick them to plunder. It's a wicked bunch of people. If you're one of these people that finds good in everything and everybody, I sympathize with God on this one. The Amalekites were a wicked bunch. No remorse. They didn't learn from their lesson. They didn't learn from Esau's lesson where he despised his birthright. These are individuals that despise God's people. Because what do you think the angst or the animosity between the Amalekites and the Israelites is? Do you find that Israelites saying, you know what, let's go find some Amalekites and let's get their stuff. Let's plunder them. Let's take their wives. Do you find the Israelites doing that? No, you don't. The reverse is always true. Do you see it? This isn't God's people, Israel. This isn't God just saying, you know, I don't like those people, and so let's take advantage of them. No, well, these are individuals that are plunderers, taking advantage of everyone around them, and they must needs be dealt with with a strong hand. So God said, I want them wiped out utterly. Gave the message through his prophet Samuel. Samuel's called a prophet in the New Testament, and I'll go with that. He was a judge of Israel. He was a priest in Israel, but he was also a prophet. And he spoke for God. He gave divine messages uh, for God. And, and he told Saul in no unclear terms that he was to wipe out everything in the Amalekites. And interestingly, did you ever wonder why it was that God didn't want Saul to bring back any of the plunder, none of the possessions, but to wipe it out utterly? Can you think on that for a minute? Do you see a reason why? So he didn't want the children of Israel to be guilty of what the Amalekites were guilty of. He knows we're not killing you to get your stuff. We're killing you because we're executing judgment by the hand of God. There's a big difference, isn't there? See, one is a perversion of justice. One is a, uh, an excusing of your behaviors and saying, well, the reason we're doing this is because God wants them dead, but actually the reason you're doing it is because you want their stuff. It turns out that's what Saul did, and God took that very seriously. For that reason, Saul was rejected from being king of Israel because he was acting like an Amalekite. 
See, God said, I don't want you to have any. I can give you all the stuff you need. You don't plunder people. You don't take things from people. That, God's people have never done that, by the way. Never gone to war to get stuff from people. It's a wicked thing. It's, we have to be, be careful in our country as well not to pervert justice that way. It, it, it really bothers me when people say that we go to war for oil. We go to war for oil. Now, I want to tell you something. I don't. The friends I know that have fought have never fought for oil. They, they, they fight because of genocide and those things. You say, Pastor, what about the powers that be? Well, you know something? That's a perversion of justice, and God will deal with that. If that's the fact, because God hates that. The Malachites are plunderers. And then guess who comes on the scene in Esther chapter 3 and verse 1? Haman, the Agagite. And guess what he's trying to do? He's trying to do what Saul was supposed to do, but he's trying to do it to God's people. And why is it he's trying to do it to God's people? Because he hates God. See, that's the difference. The Amalekites hated God. When Esau despised his birthright, it was not merely a matter of, you know, I'm more of a hunter, I'm not into possessions. No, the birthright was not possessions. Show me where Jacob inherited possessions from his father. He didn't. He built his wealth with Laban and gave a lot of what he built to Esau. Esau is the one that inherited the possessions from his father. What Jacob inherited was the blessing, and the blessing was Jesus. And that's what Esau didn't want, and that's what the Amalekites didn't want. And friend, make no mistake, the enemies of God are God's enemies. In other words, people that hate God are not neutral toward Him. They hate Him. And that's why today, genocide is attempted against the Jews. It's not about the Jews. It's about God and what the Jews represent. And even in a time when the Jews are plebeians under Ahasuerus, what are the Jews in the kingdom of Ahasuerus? Are they controlling everything? Are they, uh, you know, are they too powerful? They're little more than chattel or slaves. Esther would not have been chosen if she had told them that she was a Jew. Is Haman's concern, i got to stop the Jews from taking over? What's his concern? I hate God. And I'm going to kill his people. And friend, today, cloaked under whatever argument or reasoning it be. The same is true. Same is true. You meet someone that hates Israel. And I'm not talking about spiritual Israel. I'm talking about the descendants of Israel who are a real people. You meet someone who hates them and they're an Agagite. An Amalekite. On purpose, to be kind, at least inadvertently, they hate God's plan. They hate the God of Israel. And that is the theme of what we're going to see in Esther. You ever ask yourself, why? What's a Haman's problem? What's his problem? Well, he hates God. And you know, today, you can, you can just name powers that be. Say, what is the deal? What's their problem? Same problem. They hate God. So, Father, please help us to be reminded about these truths, sobering as they are. And help us to be able to have your perspective. And then, God, when put in position like that of King Saul, help us to be careful. Not to be just like the enemy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.